Welcome to all of you. Today we are going to discuss about the family structure in Marxist interpretation and how did Karl Marx and Frederick Engels look at family? What is their assumptions about family and what is the kind of family they had imagined uh, in a socialist or a hardcore communist state? So, but before that, before we start think, uh, speculating what family means for them, we have to understand two things. The first is that we are going to critique the loopholes which are there in this assumption, theoretical assumption, by taking into point the very origin of how it started. And the second thing that we have to take into consideration is also that the good points which are there in this theoretical formulation, you know, those that will make you think about, irrespective of them being validated, they do deserve our thought and concern, right? So we are going to start talking about how, you know, the entire story of Frederick Angel's writing a book on the state private property and family begin. And we are going to deal with that, what were the, you know, ramifications? How was this interpretation received internationally? By who it was internationally and what kind of gender binary were they talking about and how is it anachronistic or can you still believe that you can you know still accept that this is still functional in the families around you in your own family so let's go ahead and figure out that what was the entire thought process about so starting with uh, here you can see that before his death before Karl Marx died he was reading a book called as Ancient Society, which was written by an American anthropologist called as Louis Morgan. Now, why is Ancient Society so famous and why should we discuss about it? It is one of the only books which, you know, gives evidence and strongly advocates the entire origin of the primitive communism society which was there. That society was hardcore matrilineal rather than patriarchal. And this matrilineal system he has given a lot of evidence for. So what happened was before Karl Marx, you know, before his death, he was reading this book and he was writing his notes, his own critique and, you know, having a conversation with this author through his own uh, note-taking ability and uh, doing a pressy, like having a summary of it. So what happened then is after his death, Frederick Angels, who himself had his own conceptions about family, you know, he got that pressy, he got the summary and the book and the notes of Karl Marx after his death. And he realized that why not go ahead and write a book about it? So the book that was published was called as The Origin of the Family, Private Property and the State. And it was published in 1884 in German language. Now, a couple of things that we have to understand. What does this book talk about? It talks about family, the state, and property, right? The second thing that it talks about is that the very origin, the inspiration for this book is ancient society. So a lot of these assumptions that Frederick Angels will make is drawing from the work, previous work of Morgan that we have to keep in mind while discussing it. And as soon as this book was published, you know, uh, Clara Zetkin, who was one of the very famous women socialist uh, activists in Germany, a very close confidant of Rosa Luxemburg and others, she actually, you know, was very enamored by the book by Frederick Angels and said that, you know, it is an emancipation of the female sex. And because of that, what happens is that we are here to discuss three ideas that Frederick Angels' book has. These are three concrete ideas. The first one is, you know, he discusses about the family structure in a bourgeois family, that what is the family structure that they have. The second thing that uh, it talks about is the origin of family and how, you know, as the economic movement changed, the structure of family also changed, the transition. So it tells you that family is a fluid concept, right? And the third thing that they talk about is the future vision of family, that how do you imagine a family in a communist realm, something which we are going to critique. But these are the basic three points that we have to take away from this lecture. So talking about the first structure, like the, what was the family structure in the bourgeois, bourgeois family? 
So as it was basically said that, you know, in bourgeois families, you had these divorces and marriages out of, you know, contract. And it was like an economic cage that you are getting in. For example, you take the prenup, you sign a prenup now before you get married. So the idea that, um, and if you don't know what is a prenup, you have to Google it. So the point here is that uh, the marriages are not made out of love or natural love or free love. It is much more as a society's company therefore dominated by the bourgeois but at the same time bourgeois marry either for having more business accumulation between families or out of boredom right so there's nothing very uh, you know uh, surreal or utopian about platonic about their marriages which is completely a contract um, the second thing that the book talks about is the historicization of family structure so when we talk about historic historicization, we talk about the historic evolution of the family structure. So the book talks about that in primitive communism, right? When you didn't have, the, there was a tribal population, there was no class, there was no hierarchy, there was no division, there was no uh, segmentation and differentiation between the various people. Uh, a couple of things which were seen at that point of time, A, as Morgan had said, that it was a matrilineal society, A. B, there was, you know, sexual access was for everyone in the generation, but there was no concept of private property and tribalism. So there was no concept as the family which we have seen, be it an extended family, joint family, or a nuclear family. That concept was not there, obviously. So you will ask, you know, that is Karl Marx and Frederick Angels, are they trying to say that in the very origin or evolution of human beings, did they not have a natural institution as a family? So the answer to that thought is no, they did believe that family is a natural prototype, that yes, it is natural to have a family, but they didn't believe that anything which is natural is also fixed. So they believe that yes, family is natural, but the way you look and understand family right now in 2020 or during your ages of existence is not the same structure of family which would have been there. So it is fluid. It has evolved over the period of time and space. So as we have said, is that after, after your primitive communism, you had the second uh, mode of production and historical materialism, which was ancient mode of production when, you know, there was this domestication of animals, when people started understanding that they can bake and do agriculture, and there are other modes of lifestyle and survival also. So during that time, what happened, there was this entire, as you know, very often like feminists say that, you know, after marriage, women are domesticated. So where does this idea come from? So this idea comes from over here that, um, when the domestication of animals was started, two things happened. When one was that men started domestication, women were given some other roles and chores. So there was a division of labor that you see in a capitalistic society, a specialization, you know, that women are meant to do this and men are meant to do this. This entire idea, you know, which is very natural to us. Also, at the same time, it tells you that in the longer period of time, in the longer period of time, Thing was that there was a certain kind of because ancient mode of production was also a slave society what started happening that children and women became slaves of men so we are talking about two things that happened in the ancient mode of production according to the book first that there was the specialization or division of labor i'm not saying that it's an equal division of labor and the second thing is that there was this entire understanding that women and men can be dominated over. So the very nascent beginning of a patri uh, patriarchal society. Why did men have so much of power and how did it continue over the generations? You know, How did it sustain itself over the years? Because we see that we still have a patriarchal setup. The reason was that, you know, the entire idea that Karl Marx and Frederick Angels asked the question that, you know, why do men pass on their property to only their sons? It took a very long legal battle to question it. But why did men pass on the property to their sons and not to their daughters initially? And why didn't they pass on their property to their sister's son or daughter? Why their own biological, you know, children? So think about it. Isn't it, why has, why has it become so normal? 
you know, why this culture, there had to be a lot of legal reforms to question it, but why was it there in the first place, right? Then we talk about the vision of the future family, which we are going to discuss. What I want you to take away from this entire presentation till now is that fact that they are ready with the accept, you know, acceptance that family is fluid. It is natural, but it's fluid, it keeps on changing. Now we have different kinds of families. We have, you know, uh, identities which are non-binary between the male and female, right? So family structure has evolved in a different way. So they do understand just because the structure of family has evolved doesn't mean that it's not no, no longer a family. But we also have to understand what was the origin of it. So we have to understand that what kind of, you know, what was their own family life, which we have discussed. So Marx, as you know, he was, you know, uh, dating his uh, partner, Jenny, for six, uh, seven years, and then he got married, and they had seven kids, out of which only three survived. Um, the first problem that Marx himself had was, A, that he, it was not as if that he didn't believe that marriage was a moral institution. He believed that marriage was a moral institution, but at the same time, he also believed that state or religion does not need to validate it. So the question that he was asking is that why does the Christian Prussian state or Christianity as a religion validate marriage? Why can't marriage happen without it? Why do you have to marry, marry in a church in that context? Right? So that was the first question that he had. We also know that Karl Marx had his own illegitimate son with his maid and housekeeper. So it tells you about the diversions and distractions that can also happen at the same time the second thing was that Karl himself knew that over the period of time when he was moving from uh, Prussia to France and from France to Belgium then finally to London he himself in, like Jenny was also moving along with him so in the abject poverty and so much of traveling Karl Marx himself knew that because of his compassion and passion for communism and the ideology, there was a certain kind of sacrifice that his wife had to make, right? So that, that shows you a certain kind of inequality which is already there in the relationship. That is Karl Marx. The second thing which is about Frederick Angels, as I told you that when Frederick went to Manchester in the Victoria Mill that he was owning with Ermine Brown, he goes over there, he falls in love with a Irish factory woman a uh, worker called as Mary Burns. And they never marry. They cohabit together, they live together, they travel, but they never marry, right? And what happens is that in 1863, she passes away. And after that, uh, Frederick is basically involved with Mary's younger sister called as Lizzie Burns. And there are books written on that, right? So the point which I'm trying to make is Frederick Angels by himself, his entire life was a reflection of the fact that he didn't believe in marriage as an institution that has to be followed. He married Lizzie only because, you know, she was about to die and she requested. So a couple of hours before her death. But so he never had kids. The money that he had, he left it, gave it away to Karl Marx's daughters. So the point which I'm trying to make that at least Frederick Angels' life was much more a reflection of his own ideology. But what were the things that were disturbing them? Why were they questioning the family structure? So the first reason why they were questioning the family structure was because, remember how you know, Charles Dickens was writing about child labor in UK through David Copperfield and through Oliver Twist and how you know, uh, children suffer. So the first point was that when industrialization began and the factory structure began, a lot of children were, were employed. Charles Dickens himself, he was, you know, had to do factory work because his father was uh, imprisoned, imprisoned because he couldn't pay his debt, right? So when a child in his very growing nascent years is into the very hard, violent and abusive factory work, what kind of family will that child be able to imagine or live in or create in the future? That's the first point. The second is that your parents are also working. They're also working class. They're also uh, you know, exhausted completely. They're also working in families. So what kind of will they have in those very little moments of relief? And that is what both Karl, and Karl Marx and Frederick Angels, in the very initial aspect, linked it with the dissolution of families, that how the industrialization is going to dissolve families. 
the karl marx also said that you know because of this entire growth of industrialization and so many factories there's a rise of sexual exploitation of young women who are working in the factories there's also a rise in prostitution and eventually the reason why family setup is in like you know continuing over the period of time is only because it is a unit of consumption and nothing else and it teaches you how to passively accept hierarchy within your family which you once understand you are going to accept in the same passive way the hierarchy of the state we don't have to agree with it but this is one of the assumptions which they were telling now what did they how did they define family so both marx and find family as an institution through which the wealthy pass down their private property to their children right thus reproducing class inequality and causing you know that entire debate between privilege and merit and everything right and this entire idea that you know which they would say the self made man or self made woman the idea of it uh, why can't we have great you know facebook or twitter or other big startup discoveries or even you know these multi trillion uh, companies like amazon why didn't they start from a third world country like india so the very moment if you know you are in a first world country you have certain kind of privilege and the reason if you can look at it is that even if you start from your garage or you from your terrace or from a small startup but you do have capital investment from your parents or from the networking or the social capital that you have which people in the third world countries are uh, capable of right so my question then is that our third like why did it take so long for us to create this entrepreneur spirit right not because that there was no merit but because there was no bourgeois capital which was there initially right so this is one thing which he says very clearly also the class conflict rarely boils down to a revolution you know when you repeat a member in 1848 when there were revolutions in europe and it failed it was crushed so karl marx and frederick engels then took a step back and they said thinking that why you know the revolutions failed what was the reason for that and one of the reasonings that they came across was that revolution failed because the institutions such as the family they function as the ideological control apparatus and they convince the masses that you know whatever the present unequal system is natural it is good it is inevitable you can't fight it so this can this idea of being passive and accepting it be it your family or be the state or the class conflict or the domination of the bourgeois all of the that is also taught from the social superstructure which is the family and family is a superstructure instead of being the economic structure right the nuclear family has emerged the more you know in the uh, as after the inception of late capitalism after the second world war what started happening was the nuclear family started emerging like lesser people in the family extended family started becoming you know a thing of the past and it is a product of industrialization it is the product of industrialization and the more the capitalistic system will emerge and be flexible and will grow you will see that people are much more uh, fragmented much more aloof you know uh, much more higher rates of divorce differentiations so all of these things are going to happen because your reality is what is created by the socio economic reality around you the material forces so what was the future vision so okay fine we understand the question is okay fine we understand that uh, yes there is this very constructivist or maybe a very structural loophole within the entire idea of how we perceive family and how it has power over us so how are how are you karl marx how are you frederick engels imagining a future vision of family so the first thing that they imagined and they you know envisaged was the absence of private property right so no will no passing down your property no money in your own personal account that you are accumulating and giving it on in your will there would be freer relationship women will not be dependent on man a man and children would be raised communally they'll be going to the public schools which will be funded by the state in socialism that's why education should 
everyone is entitled to education and um, there should be no judgment inhibition between the relationships of different sexes right now the question is that are they talking about open marriage no they're not talking you if you are in love with someone you stay with that person not out of the economic bondage of it right uh, but because you really love and the moment when you fall out of love you go your different paths but it is not something which is a necessity or obligation to you because of the fear of society that you have to stay or you are you have to stay because divorce is going to be very expensive right the second thing which they talk about is that private housework like cooking cleaning sweeping all of those private chores which are normally done by women they would be done by the community the child also be done by the community so there's more solidarity so the entire idea that this is yours this is mine it can be property it can be child it can be a woman it can be a husband wife all of those ideas of mine and yours will go away right and the moment there will be no character assassination or objectification of women so women don't have to be you know uh, scared about being pregnant or what will happen how will the is she raise the child what will the society say because it is done with the solidarity right and this is going to have a better much more longevity than the current uh, family structure that we see which is very hardcore you know there are so many families in the world who are not able to afford education for the kids they are not able to afford a better lifestyle it is very very difficult for them to survive so it would have been you know a miracle or a benediction for all these families you know them out of their morass now what are the different kinds of family structure because i told you they talked about the historical origin of family so the first one is that you know they said there are four or five different kinds of family setups so don't think that nuclear family is the only family setup so the first one is a consanguine family where everyone married everyone generation wise you know that you marry your brother you marry your sister you marry anyone right and uh, this did have its own internal inhibitions which i'll discuss but this was the first type of family the second kind of family was punaluan families where sisters were married to each other's husband and brothers were married to each other's wife so you don't have marriage between the sister and the brother but in the generation wise you are having marriages so there is no uh, idea of monogamy because what frederick angels and um, Karl Marx believed that monogamy is something which is even after marriage is mostly followed by the wife, right? So that puts a lot of restrictions over the female sexuality. And then there was this third kind of family structure, which was pair pairing families, which were loosely paired. Now, why why am I talking about these different kinds of families, and what was the reason that they became redundant? one of the reasons why they became redundant was we all know survival of the fittest charles darwin's idea um and natural selection the point here is that when you know there were consanguine families and punaluan families it was seen that there are much more of genetic defects because you are inbreeding and there's incest and such and kind of thing so in that context what started happening was you know there was the child was not healthy so that is the reason how we eventually came with the idea of you know having less partners and different uh, distance between the cousins and you know someone from inside your tribe or caste but not directly related and then eventually we had the idea of monogamous families which were you know uh, it can monogamous family the part of extended families and it was created by capitalism and eventually capitalism has now created nuclear families right and what we see is a common thread that has been going on is the entire idea that there is patriarchy right and there is this internal connection between patriarchy and the capitalistic system right which you can further if you are interested you can search about so how do we critique it we don't have to really accept it the first critique is that they are talking about the binaries the gender binaries which are very fluid now so what about the identities of transgender or what about the different kinds of identities which are non binary so where what kind of families will they get into and what kind of bourgeois or proletariat class they do form into that is the first question which you can critique it the second way of critiquing it is that this entire idea of 
you know community living and uh, this entire idea of uh, not having private property or no sexual inhibition can also be misused and it's not very easy to live with so how would the society come across and empower itself in understanding the conflicts which will come out of polygamy and how will it deal with it right because the idea it is very utopian but and in terms of epistemology that is the science of knowledge good enough but is it praxis can it be practiced right and the third critique of this entire narrative can be that this was a very you know like we have seen that both karl marx and frederick angels were born in prussia and they were much more european you know so is it something again a very imperial kind of mindset which is only meant for the first world countries you know what about cultures which have different kinds of lifestyles and different kinds of uh, you know religious orthodox and superstitions and uh, different kinds of narratives of living their life so uh, is it only so the world there is a world beyond the christian prussian state right so how does that world you know uh, go ahead with but then we anyway we can criticize it we don't have to accept it but the point over here which i'm asking you to think about is that they told you about a why what is the family structure in a bourgeois family that you can see still is there the second kind of objectification of women for example in kanyadan you give away things which with an object so kanyadan exactly is a term which can be questioned uh the same happens in every other religion it is not just hinduism but the point which i'm trying to make is that when karl marx and Frederick Angels questioned the religious authority over marriage. They were questioning that how Christianity also was very, you know, dominant, dominated when it came to the marriage systems, right? Irrespective of Protestant Christianity being the empowered form of it. So that is the first thing. The second thing is what is the historical origin? That what is the origin or evolution of family structure? And the third thing that they talked about is the future vision of. a family and this is the basic idea that you have to accept from it so i will leave you with the idea that does it make sense you know there are good points and bad points in both of them how what kind of family do you think for yourself and what do you think is you know having equal division of labor and much more of equity instead of equality so what family do you imagine for yourself thank you <laughs>